Okay, well, I'd like to welcome everyone to another Sunday service of Christ Reformed Church. I'm Pastor Ferguson, and it's great to be gathered together in the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, uh, life is not always uh, easy, and it's not always pain pain free. In fact, it's it's quite the opposite. As you age, you get more pain. Uh, but you know, all that happens uh, for us to prepare ourselves for eternity. And God uses the physical uh, things of this world, the physical ailments of suffering, you know, to get us ready for eternity, to get our souls ready. So thankfully, there'll be no, no more suffering uh, when we get to, to heaven, when we pass from this earth. There'll be no more suffering uh, in heaven. There, there is no suffering, and there's no suffering. There'll be no suffering in the new earth. Uh, that's good news, you know. So uh, it's not not always easy, like I said, but you know it's part of His plan. Uh, if we were without pain, then we wouldn't long for heaven, would we? We wouldn't long to be free. From this earth we would want to stay here and that's kind of what the you know the rich people uh, they don't want to leave you know they have everything they they desire uh, here on earth and um, you know unfortunately uh, they're not going to be able to take anything with them you know they're they're going to have to leave it all and you know Jesus talked a lot about that with the rich man. Uh, in fact, he called him a fool because he laid up treasure for himself here on earth and, and he did not prepare himself for eternity. At any rate, I'm going to be continuing in a, a series on Jonah uh, doing the will of God. Okay, You know, what, what does it mean to do the will of God? How can I do the will of God um, how important is it to do the will of God? Well, those are some good questions that we need to be asking ourselves each and every day. And, uh, you know, to answer, it's very important to do the will of God. And in fact, if you don't, or if you're not uh, focused on doing the will of God, you're outside of the will of God. And that's the most dangerous place to be in the world is outside of the will of God. You don't want to be outside of the will of God. If you're outside of the will of God, you're in uh, you're in danger. You know. Uh, fortunately, if we confess our sins of being outside of the will of God, if we confess, you know, that sin that we have been caught up in and it's been besetting us. God is faithful to forgive us of our sins and to bring us back into the will of God, into His perfect will. So, before I get started, I'd like to invite you to join me in a word of prayer and then we'll begin in the book of Jonah is where we're at. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you and praise you for all that you are, all that you've done, all that you continue to do in our hearts and our lives. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquity. Create in us clean hearts, renew right minds within us. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for being our God and our Father. We thank you for bringing us back to yourself and, and keeping us in your will. Uh, Lord, even when we drift, you always, you're always there and you, you draw us back to yourself and convict us of our sins, uh, Holy Spirit. We thank you for convicting us. We thank you for disciplining us uh, Lord, and uh, it is our desire that we walk in obedience uh, to you and with you uh, <clears throat> according to your word, Lord. And uh, God help us, uh, we pray you would remove those sins from our lives that are besetting us, that are hindering us from accomplishing your will. Uh, Lord, we, we just can do nothing without you, but with you we can do all things. So we pray for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ maybe suffering physically or spiritually, uh, Lord, we pray your hand of blessing and help upon us. Uh, all your little children, 
Uh, we pray you protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Uh, Lord, you just provide for them all they need, the food and uh, raiment, their clothing and shelter, a loving family, a nice, uh, warm, comfortable bed to sleep in at night. And, uh, and God, we just thank you uh, for being our God, eternal God. Uh, Lord, may we be like you in all that we think, say, and do. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so back to our friend Jonah. Okay. Pull him up here. He's at the end of the uh, end of the Old Testament. And he is in between Obadiah and Micah. Okay, so last time we left off at Finishing chapter 1, and Jonah's not a long book, it's just four chapters. But now we're, I'm going to be begin uh, reading in chapter 2 and <clears throat> verse 1. Um, let me back up just to one verse where it says, uh, Now the Lord had prepared, in chapter 1 verse 17, The Lord had prepared a great fish, to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Okay, that's where we left off. You know, the men had thrown, had, had finally conceded uh, to do the will of God, do what Jonah had told them to do, and that is throw him into the sea in order for the storm to stop. Okay, so uh, as I said last time, you know. It's not until we get back into God's will that the that the storm is going to stop. Okay, you know, once we get into God's will, then the storm will stop. And that doesn't mean we won't have storms uh, along the way to test our faith and to try us. You know, there will be storms, but uh, they won't be this severe as as this storm was for Jonah and the men in the boat. It was about to to kill them. You know, it was about to break the boat in half. The waves were coming up over the boat, and they were about to go under. You know, if your storm gets that bad, then most likely you're outside of the will of God, and God is God is uh, creating that that severe storm in order to bring you back to Himself in in confession and repentance uh, of your sin. So, chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. You know, what's interesting is that he didn't pray until the third day. I mean, well, he, he was really fighting this thing. Uh, you know, some commentators say that he actually died and came back to life on the third day. Uh, we don't, the Bible doesn't say anything about that. Um, but, you know, it does say that he was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And then, and then it says, then Jonah prayed. So he had been cruising for a while. And that's a long time, being in, the, being in a whale's belly for three days and three nights. Can you imagine that? Cruising around, I mean, in the sea and how sick you would be. All the acid and water coming in there and... Now, it's been documented. People have been swallowed by uh, giant blue whales, you know, before. And you can actually survive in there in the belly of a whale. Uh, you know, evidently there's some oxygen in there. and um, I don't know how it all works, but I've never been inside of the belly of a whale. I, I hope I never, uh, you know, have that opportunity. But uh, at any rate... You know, Jonah waits till the third day to pray. And he said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell. So, here he calls the belly of the well, the belly of hell. I don't know what you're going through, and you don't know uh, what I'm going through. But it can be likened unto the belly of hell. You know, if it gets that severe, uh, you know, if we continue to hold on uh, to that that 
thing, that sin, whatever we're doing or committing that is outside the will of God, then our lives can become a belly of hell, right? Where we're being tormented, afflicted, you know, day in, day out, like Jonah was. Three days, three nights. I mean, I can't imagine what he went through in there. But some of us, uh, more than that, you know, maybe uh, three months, three years, or more, until we finally relent uh, and let go, you know, of the sin. It's a sad fact, my friend. It's a sad truth, isn't it? hate to put it that way, but, you know, that's life. And some of us are a little stiffer neck than others, myself included. You know, we really have to examine ourselves um, to make sure you know, we're in the will of God. And if we're not, we need to get rid of that. Whatever it is that's keeping us outside of the will of God. Okay, so he says here, he heard me out of the belly of hell. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep. So now, now he's blaming it on God. Well, you know, God didn't cast him into the deep. He cast himself. You know, Jonah's the one that, that chose to be cast into the sea. Like I said, he could have told the, the captain and... The, and the sailors of the ship to take him to Nineveh. That's where he was supposed to go. But he didn't say that. He didn't want to. He he did not want to go to preach to those people. You know, he had some serious resentment issues with the Ninevites. He did not like them at all. And, you know, I don't know why. The Bible doesn't say. Uh, maybe they did something to him or his family. Or you know, who knows what happened. Uh, but for whatever reason, he did not like them at all. And he, didn't, he did not want to see them uh, receive any blessing from God. He really hated them. He was bitter, 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 bitter in his spirit. You know, he can't be like that. You know, the Bible commands us to love our enemies as ourselves, to forgive, uh, to do good. Even those people who, who wished us harm, uh, we're still to do good unto them, pray for them. You know, and if we, if there comes an opportunity where they need our help, and we are able to give it, then you know the Bible says we're to do it. We're to help them. And Jonah, he didn't want to do that. Uh, so here he says, "Thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the sea, and the and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me." Then I said. I am cast out of thy sight, and yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. So now the conviction is coming on. Now the repentance is beginning to, to take sway. Okay? He's finally coming to grips with reality, with God. You, know, you, you don't want to get into an arm wrestling match with God. That's what Jonah was in. Jonah was in an arm wrestling match with God, and God obviously, you know, won the arm wrestling match, and Jonah lost. Now, he didn't have to do it, but Jonah, that was his choice. Um, the waters can pass me about, verse 5, even to the soul. The deep, or the depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. Here he's describing his little... You know, trip in the belly of the well. It wasn't very pleasant. Uh, you know, not not a five star hotel he's staying in, not even a one star. You know, he he's in the belly of hell. Okay. Verse six. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth, with her bars, was about me forever. Yeah. He was on a long ride, didn't he? This wasn't no, uh, no carnival cruise. No Caribbean cruise. No, he, he, he went down. Ears probably popping, you know. I can't imagine. I mean, it could have been miles under the sea. Uh, very painful experience. 
Um, yet, he says in verse 6, hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. God spared him. You know, he's beginning to realize how foolish a decision he made uh, in fleeing from God, fleeing from the presence and will of God. He's beginning to see how merciful and compassionate God is. He says, Thou hast brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. I, you know, finally, he, he's, he's, he's gaining the conviction. He's, he's gaining the repentance. Okay? And that's what we all need to do. Uh, we need to become remorseful. We need to become uh, repentant. We need to confess our sins unto the Lord. Okay? If we don't do that, there'll be no change. And God will continue to hammer us uh, with His rod of discipline. Uh, because He loves us. You know, God doesn't discipline us to, because He's you know, out of anger, because He doesn't like us. He disciplines us because He loves us. He wants us to become like Christ. He wants us to be changed into the image of Christ. That's why He disciplines us. For our good. That's the only thing that will change us, is discipline. Verse 7, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. So, you know, John is giving a recount of what happened. Uh, you know, his prayer came into the temple from the belly of hell, belly of the well, into the temple you know, where God dwelt, the presence of God, uh, the mercy seat, you know, the ark. Uh, that's where they met with God. That's where God dwelt in those days and those times. That that, that uh, dispensation. dispensation. They that observe lying vanities, verse 8, forsake their own mercy. But, verse 9, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord's. Now, you know, Jonah is preaching a little sermon in the belly of the well. Preaching, who is, who is he preaching to? Well, he's preaching to himself. He's having a conversation with God. He, I mean, he finally is beginning to talk to God. Okay, but unfortunately, it took all this. You know, it took him getting tossed into the sea. It took him getting swallowed up. It took him almost cost other people's lives and his own. You know, and we don't want to go that route. You, know, you don't have to go that route. You don't have the world doesn't have to. You don't have to lose everything before you begin to do the will of God. You can begin to do the will of God any time, right now. You know, just confess your sin, turn from it, ask the Lord to forgive you. you know, uh, and your life will change for the better. And look what happens. As soon as uh, Jonah comes to confession and repentance, look what happens in verse 10. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. So, there you go. God spared him. God gave him another chance. The Lord spake. The fish acted. You know, the, the fish obeyed the Lord. Jonah didn't obey the Lord. All the animals obeyed the Lord. All the fishes, all the birds, the animals, they obeyed the Lord. Whatever the Lord wants them to do, that's what they're going to do. Lord's in control of the animal world. The fish, the sea, the alligator, snake, all that stuff. The Lord's in control of all that. Okay? It's man that, you know, is the disobedient one. I'm not going to say God has a problem with man, because God doesn't have a problem with anything. God's in control of everything. You know, man has a problem with God. The animals don't have a problem with God. Fish don't have a problem. Birds don't have a problem with God. They know God's sovereign. I mean, they, to some extent, I mean, they don't have a relationship with God like you and I do. But they obey God. They get scared when they hear thunder. You know, they, 
They know. There's God doing that. They go run under the under the bed and stuff. It frightens them. You know, they fear God more than most pe than, than a lot of people do. Even Christians. You know, that's sad. I don't want an animal fearing God more than me. Do you? So it says the Lord spake in the fish and vomited out Jonah upon the dry dry land. Okay, I'm gonna roll into chapter three. I, you know, originally these numbers and chapters were not in the Bible. Man put those in there. Originally they didn't, it, wasn't, they, it was just one book. There was no chapters. Man did that to try to organize things. But ver there was no verses. Man did that. You know, but, which is not a big deal. It helps us quote and reference, you know, any chapters or verses. But, at any rate, sometimes I roll into the next chapter and you see... And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, and go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it, for the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose, and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Okay? <laughs> now he's doing the will of God. Now he didn't do it before, like the parable of the two boys, uh, one said he would do the Father's will, but he didn't, but later he did. And the other one, he said he would not do uh, the Father's will, uh, and uh, initially, and later he did. I'm sorry, I may have got that paper. So the first one said, I will do the Father's will, but he didn't. And he didn't do it. The second one said, I will not, but later he did. But here it was like Jonah, you know, originally he said he would not, but later he did. Now he did. You know, that's the story with most of us, with all of us really. You know, we begin, we don't begin coming out of the room saying, I'm going to do the will of God, and we do it. We usually come out of the room saying, I don't want to do the will of God. I'm not going to do the will of God, but God draws us to himself, and we end up doing the will of God. If you're a child, then he will draw you unto himself, and you will eventually do the will of God. He will save you and sanctify you and glorify you. That's just our God we serve. And if not, he, it's he who began a good work in you, Philippians 1, will perfect it until the day of Christ. He'll finish it. And we don't begin our salvation. The Lord does. We don't sanctify ourselves. The Lord does, even though... In the process of sanctification, there is a level of cooperation between us and God. You know, a yielding, a yielding. We're not puppets, okay? We do have uh, a will, although it is in the confines of the sovereignty of God. We do have a will. We do have a spirit of our own, okay? We do make choices of our own. Once again, those choices are in the sovereignty of God. They're, they're in the circle and circumference of God, of His control. He can override any of our decisions at any time. Of anybody's decisions, He can override them at any time, if He chooses. Okay. So our will is free to a certain extent. Okay. A certain extent. That's the same with anybody. Nobody is completely free. Nobody is, uh, has an absolute free will outside of the will of God. Now, that just is not true. That's not biblical. That's not theologically accurate. It's not even, can't be true. Because God is in control of all things. And God, if God is not in control of all things, then he's not God. We know that can't happen. So it says that Jonah rose and went into Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. A big city. It took three days to walk through it. It's, yeah, it was huge. You know. Um, probably like you know, Chicago or uh, New York or you know some big city. I don't know, maybe even a normal sized city. It, it takes a while to walk through it. Even like Little Rock or you know we saw something. I mean if you're on foot it may, it may take you a couple days to walk through it. So, and it says, And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried 
and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Forty days. That's the time of testing. And Jesus was tempted by the devil for forty days in the wilderness. Um, there was a lot of things that were forty. You know, number forty is significant in the Bible. It, it, it represents a time of trial or testing. Okay. Um, so he's finally preaching, you know, to the Ninevites, and it says, uh, "I may just finish chapter three. You know, it's really not a lot, of, a lot of content here. It says, "So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them." So here, you know. Jonah wasn't obedient, but now these, these people in Nineveh, that's why God said there. He, God had already prepared these people uh, to receive His Word. He had prepared their hearts. He knew they were going to repent because He had prepared them. He just needed His man. He needed His preacher to get there to proclaim the Word of the Lord so they would, they would repent and believe God. Okay. Uh, from the greatest to the least, for the word, uh, for for word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. So even the king is heeding the prophet Jonah. Uh, I don't Jonah, evidently Jonah, they're 